and this building was the jet engine test cell building. So aircraft carriers would come in, they would offload planes, and they would take the, the engines, um, and they would bring them in here and work on them and test them, and then put them back on the airplanes. 1800 Ferry Point in Alameda, California. We're on a former Alameda Naval Air Station and a, an antique military building that we fixed up to use as professional maker studio space. Everything in the middle is shared. All these tools all the way down is shared. Table saw, another table saw, big band saw, there's sanders, another table saw, but all the spaces to the outside are individual spaces. So all these people have their own cubby where they create what they create. And we use the tools in the middle to do that. My dad had a little wood shop, but I hated woodworking. It was really boring. And, um, and then when I was at college, I was in a fashion design program that didn't work out at all. <laughs> but there was a wood furniture program on the campus and we had an open campus so I could walk around and see what everybody was working on. I was just really drawn to people making functional, beautiful things out of wood. I think I definitely, I come at this from like a little more of like this craft side than the more maybe creative art side. I don't think like design is as much a strength as building. I've sold a lot of these table stools that are, um, I, I had a lot of recycled material lying around. I glue it up into cubes, I put it on the lathe, and I make something. And in the beginning, it really was just wood I couldn't bear to throw away. And I didn't have a real use for it. Um, and I started making these things and, and um, it's just a way for me to feel like I'm not filling the landfill with usable materials, but the materials are too small for most things. So you have to glue them together to make a bigger thing. So essentially I take wood and glue it back together into a tree, and then I make something out of it. We moved here 23 years ago, almost 23 years ago. So, you know, that first 10 years was, you know, basically filling the place up of you know the tenants that we have now so um, it was you know it was it was quite a task because it's what like a 60,000 square foot building so you know there's tools here that nobody has we could do bigger stuff here than anywhere in the US for woodworking because the tools came off these big ass like boats the aircraft carriers and, and like I mean, we had a lathe that could turn eight feet tall. So yeah, it was a really interesting place. And you know, Dean and Leon are such technical guys with their work that they were just doing stuff that, you know, and are still doing that kind of work. I'm the guy of last resort. When everyone else fails, they call me and I'm able to. I'm a founder. Dean and I founded this place. We built it. We did the remodel. We worked our butts off on this place. So I think with that kind of like core of talent and space, it just makes for a perfect uh, environment for um, a self-organized like, you know, kind of craft community. I love the technical expertise. Like if I don't know how to do something, somebody here knows and I can go around and ask so many different people how to do one thing and get a different answer and then figure out how to do it. I'm completely self-taught. Didn't take any classes, didn't go to school for it. In this building a lot of people went to school for it and they're, they know so much more than I do about certain things. I, I majored in sculpture in school so I like to make things look crazy and not know how they're going to stand up. But when you fly by the seat of your pants you find a way to get something done and that that energy is also useful. Coming in like I knew some things but I didn't know a lot so I used to come in early and before anybody else got here and I would go like look at everybody else's work and like oh how do they do that oh that's a cool detail how do you do something like that and so I was able to like learn a lot from other people just by being in this space and everybody's been very helpful. 
it's, it's very helpful to be around that energy. And then at the same respect, there's people super experienced with an amazing amount of talent that I can ask, how would you attach that? How would you drill that hole? How, it's really just technical questions. Um, but they understand glass, metal, wood, and I mostly work with wood. And so when I'm marrying different materials, it's nice to have a, such a wide variety of experience in the building. It was a restaurant on Columbus Avenue, but I built five or six restaurants. I built Big Nate's ribs, I built barbecue ovens, five or six of those. So every time I learned something, I just put it in my toolbox and I used it. And opportunities present themselves and, and you go to work, you know. So it's not like being a lawyer. It's not like being anything that somebody wants, you know. Art is something that either you have to have it, or you're compelled to make it, I mean, look at Adrienne. She's compelled to do it. I was doing a residency in San Diego at San Diego State and started doing research into wildfires. I think at that point, I had actually started researching wildfires before that, but while I was down there, I had a dedicated amount of time to really focus on pushing that project forward. So I ended up researching large fires in that area and the Cedar Fire was the largest fire at the time. So in the case of the Cedar Fire sculpture, I've started with the Cedar Fire progression map, which is essentially the perimeter of the fire at different timestamps, and CAL FIRE produces those maps for every fire that happens, so you can easily find them online. Um, in this case, I took all of the shapes of the perimeters at the different timestamps and bent metal and then extruded them vertically so that time becomes the vertical axis. So it's a geographic area from the bird's eye view and then the third dimension of the z-axis um, is time. Probably the biggest inspiration for me is Dean. He's the most helpful, he's the most, he's just beautiful, I love him. and. Uh, if I have questions about something, I go up and I ask him. He's always got ideas. He's very supportive. And, you know, I, I, I'm delighted with everybody we have here now. It's just that we, you know, like, can work with each other and respect each other's work and respect each other's time. And, you know, it's this, it sounds so basic, but it's a rarity. If I need help with something, I can ask anybody. I mean, that's just kind of what we do, you know? If you need something heavy lifting, people will come and help you, or if you're like, hey, you know what, look at this. Can you tell me if this completely sucks, or do you like it? Um, and they just tell you. I mean, that's just the culture. Um, that's the big bonus. If you're making something, there's 10 different pairs of eyes that you can ask a question. Is that too fat? Is that too skinny? Do those legs work? and everybody here is creative and does things. And so you, you just get this automatic critique that's valuable. I just think that I'm in a place where um, I know that I can't be proficient at everything. So I link up with a lot of other makers and we collaborate on things. So whether it's like a bandana with somebody who's an illustrator, um, I'll end up screen printing and like sewing up the bandana. But for the most part, it's a collab of someone else's art or whatever they're good at. Yeah, I'm not the best at everything, so I might as well just get somebody who's also good and just collab with something. Even if I'm looking for sometimes particular woods, like behind me there's a stack that piece there I got from Dixie and it's going to turn into about six complete guitars from this giant piece of wood she just said I'm getting rid of this do you you know you want to buy it and I was like yeah and I got it for like pennies on the dollar compared to what you'd pay it for and it's like wow this is so great 
Sometimes these, the covers on the key, which was originally ivory, needs to be replaced. And Seth, who's an amazing woodworker, is set up to put new plastic key covers on. So that's one service that we can now do in the building that we used to send out. A lot of ivory work on this piano, and uh, now I'm looking at it and thinking maybe I'll do some more. Uh, it's a great piano, came out great, I think. Uh, some of them come out far better than others, and this one came out good. Sometimes money can be made, I guess, but usually it's we didn't get into it for the dough, we got into it for the passion. So you, you meet those people. Uh, don't hold back. The wilder and the crazier your designs will sell. Go, do it. Like, just take the risk. Because the truth is, once your vision really comes out, people will pay you to do your vision. And, and have that confidence. Instead of copying, and just changing one detail, do it all. You can always edit, you can always bring it back. Um, but do the crazy thing. Because the sooner you get doing that, the sooner you get paid to do what you wanna do. Uh, if it's interesting, I can work a whole night. And I, at 73, going on 73, I can still do that. And that's kind of the, I, you know, Wait until you're almost 73. See if you feel like doing that. I do.